Welcome to my testimony and uh, today we have a very special episode. Uh, this is um, around the globe. Around the globe. Yep. International. International. <laughs> All the way from the Philippines. I want to welcome um, Jasper. Jasper, you're going to have to pronounce your last, last name because I, I can't. Jasper. I tried my earlier. name is Jasper Itriaga. <laughs> Say it again. You pronounce it Itriaga. Itriaga. Okay. Don't, don't, you can pronounce it. That's <laughs> no, <sorry. You're> <laughs> Anyway, Jasper, <laughs> welcome to my testimony, man. It's it's, uh, it's hey, a thanks, privilege man. to have you. You know, it's um you're in the Philippines right now, and um, what time is yeah. it over there, Jasper? Um, if you could hear the chickens uh, on the background, it says eight eight thirteen a.m. Eight thirteen. Wow. <laughs> so it's in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, in the morning, and we're 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 on the East Coast here in South Florida, and we're in the mm -hmm. evening. Um, you know the beauty about technology this is awesome man. Yep. we're able to talk to you yeah. in the Philippines so um, welcome again I can't wait to get into your story I know you have a very uh, unique story how God has led you all throughout your life and um, this is going to be a beautiful testimony so welcome again thank you So before we get into my testimony today, let's bow our heads for prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you so much for the day that you have provided for us. We thank you for Jasper. Thank you for his family and thank you for his ministry. And thank you that we are able to talk to him today. We pray that as he shares his testimony with us, that souls will be blessed. That our lives will be um, changed because of it and we'll be drawn closer to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Jasper, tell us who you are and give us a little background about your upbringing. Uh, my name is Jasper Ivan Itriaga. I was born in the Philippines, born and raised here. I was raised in a very nominal cultural Seventh-day Adventist home. That means I was raised in a family. I was forced technically to become Seventh-day Adventist. You know, I had okay. no choice to do that. Right. So um, <laughs> it is. I became SDA because of the culture. You know, oh, okay. not because I found the truth and all that right. kind of stuff. That means I don't eat pork, I don't eat shrimps, I don't eat the cockroaches in the sea, but I don't know why, you know? Like, there's no reasons why I'm doing it. I go to church on Saturday, all that kind of stuff, but I don't really know why I'm doing it. Right. So there's no personal, mm -hmm. like, relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's just that nominalism. Mm -hmm. And so I was brought up like that. Fast forward, when I was 17 years old, I woke up in the hospital and my father told me that you were having, you had a severe seizure. And oh. so they had had an MRI scan on my brain and they mm -hmm. found a tumor in the left side of my brain. Wow. And I had severe seizures during that time. And and something that, 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 that is really um, personal to me is because I was, I was very scared mm. as a, a teenager. Right. And, and. You know, if you have something alien on the side of your brain, like inside, it's 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 not fun, and mm. and that's something that 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 have challenged me in my childhood. But at the same time, I think without that experience, I wouldn't be here. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny because my father came up and he was like, "Hey, Jasper, I think God is calling you to be a pastor." Now, if you have an Asian parent. You actually have no choice but to follow. And so okay. <laughs> it was like whatever goes, right? right? And so I have no choice. My father said, "Hey, you're going to to boarding school, and you need to be a pastor." I was forced there, but by God's grace, even though I was forced to be there, I found Jesus. Oh, amen. And there's a quotation from the Spirit of Prophecy that's one of my favorite quotes from the book Ministry of Healing that says, "Grace is an attribute given to undeserving human beings. Mm. We do not seek for grace, but grace was sent in search for us." Right. I was not finding God at all. I was not seeking for Him. Right. But he found me instead. Mm -hmm. I found God. I mean, he found me. I was not seeking for him. And so, so God found me in theology school and fast forward. 
I had MRI scans every year, mm. starting when I was 17 years old till I was 21. The last MRI scan I had, the tumor is completely gone. Oh wow. wow. Tumor is completely gone. Wow. Without any diet, I had I did not change my diet during that time, so it can't like claim that, you know, it's because of the health message. No, no, it, it <laughs> solely it was a miracle. Right. <laughs> you wow. know, it was a miracle. Like I did not do anything, no operation. I have four doctors who are very confused why the tumor is gone. Wow. So I can't explain it to you medically, but my MRI scan would show you show you that the tumor is getting smaller and smaller. And when I was 20 years old, the tumor is completely gone. Oh wow! Man. Yeah. So that was the start of my journey. I became a pastor. I was sent to Indonesia. I w was actually an, uh, an, an evangelist for one of um, um, for Amazing Facts for four years before oh, okay. before I left and do media ministry. Right. So when, when you got into ministry, um, how was it for you? Was it a natural thing for you or you, you, you felt out of place at times? Um, it's, it's not natural. It was, it was, I was raised in a church culture, but I was not always in the front. You mm. know, I was, I was only, only just there sitting. And so when, I, when it came to the ministry, it was a struggle. But then I think the development came when I was studying theology because you're pressured to do to be outside the boat you know like outside of your comfort zone right and so it is it is very alien per se for me mm. but at the same time because of four years of training it becomes very natural just preaching mm. girl storm boy storm every night going in every church just because you're required to do it mm. you know it becomes becomes very natural mm. okay okay mm. okay so mm. then you continued to pastor and then what happened after that yeah so so i became a pastor and and i was an evangelist for for about yeah for for four years and then i pastored in a church called jakarta uh seventh day adventist church international seventh day adventist church mm -hmm. and i was called there did pastoral ministry but was not very happy mm. and it is not to say that I hate my church members. Uh, this is recorded. So I just want to say I love my church members. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, what, what I'm saying is that I did not really feel like I was fulfilled. And okay, I know right. deep inside that I was not called to pastor a church. Right. Okay. And so I had this deep fashion, uh, passion to do media work, media ministry. Mm. And when I was younger, I, I loved photography and video. It just kind of got lost because of my addiction to video games when I was younger. Oh, okay. But growing up, mm. uh, I was a pastor back then, held the camera. I felt this like feeling, you know, wow, I fell in love with it again. And right. so uh, I started to take photos, videos. In fact, one of the first videos I made, I posted it in Facebook. It's a, a resort down in the, in the Philippines. And it got about 2 million views. Oh, wow. And so in my mind, it was like, man, that's a lot of people watching. Oh, this is, could be is, a great right. tool, you know? Right, right. And so at that time, I decided to to jump out of the boat. And I said, you know what? Um, I want to I wanna go out, leave my job, and follow what I love to do. Right. And, you know, one of the best decisions. <laughs> um, I've been traveling now for, for almost five years full time uh, in around 50 countries without any salary. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is... The Lord is 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 faithful, man. I always tell my friends I, I might be broke, but I'm very stoked for life. Right. <laughs> so, right. Um, so, so now that's what I do. I travel. I, I do photography, video. I still preach, uh, but mostly I do a lot of media work. There's a ministry called Lineage Journey. Um, you can check that out in YouTube if you guys want. It's it's what well, we do a little production for YouTube where we travel around different places around the world where the Reformation happened, the Seventh-day Adventist history happened, and, and now we're currently in season three where we go to Turkey, to, to all these places in the Middle East to, to visit what ha you know, the, the historic sites of the Bible. Right, right. Mm -hmm. is, is this, um, this series is also on Hope TV? Yeah, it's in Hope TV, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Because uh, I know, I know we, we, we watch it. We watch what, it from I'm time to time. I'm an avid watcher every Friday night yep. to see the next installment of Seven Thank Churches. <laughs> right. So, so that right. one is born because I, I, so when I was, just a little backstory on that one. Um, mm -hmm. They found my work. I've never met these people before. They were just starting and they were not like, not having production at their, their, their planning. They, they called me when I was a pastor and they saw my work and they were like, hey, we love your work, man. Why don't you join us? Okay. Uh, but but the, the email goes like 
but there's no salary. Oh, wow. <laughs> you should go to Europe for four months. Wow. And I was, I, that is not, that you should not start <laughs> with that sentence. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I know. And, and, I, and then I was like, oh, you know what? That's, that's kind of difficult, but this is what I've been praying for. Right. And so I left and, and, and I don't know what to do. I've never been to Europe. In fact, never seen winter in my life because mm -hmm. I, I was born in the tropics. Wow. You know, and this is filmed in winter season. Yes. But I said, yes, I resigned. And I said to my church, I'm, I'm really, okay. you know, like um, encouraged by God to step out of the boat. And mm -hmm. so I stepped out of the boat, left my job. Just an interesting story about this one, too. Um, they were asking me, like, hey, so how do I enter Europe? Because if you're Filipino, you're, you have a very weak passport. And that means you can't go into a country without proving that you have enough money to survive. Well, right, that's always the case. Right. And so during that time, they asked me, they were like, "Hey, do you have money and all that kind of stuff? Um, how are you going to survive in Europe?" So I'm about to get my visa, and it's interesting because because when I was when I was there sitting down, the consulate of the Czech Republic embassy heard that the reason why I'm going to Czech Republic is to film the story of John Hus, oh. and he was so interested about my story that he called me into a private meeting oh, wow. and he was like hey i want to know why you're so interested you're so young why are you so interested in this in this, the, our, the history of our people right. and so I, right. I had a private meeting it never happens i have a private meeting with this guy who was a very high ranking official and and i talked to him and he gave me a little history of john Hus, and he said why are you so inspired about john Hus?" and i said well i have this book in my bag great controversy and i mm -hmm. opened the book in the chapter called Hus in Jerome, which is oh, one of my wow. favorite chapters in the Great Controversy. And I gave it to him wow. and I said, this is why I love John Hus. Mm -hmm. And I gave it to him uh -huh. and I asked him, uh, would you give me a visa? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'll think about it. And then after five right. days, I received an email and said, thank you for the book. I'm giving you a visa for free. Wow, amen. Wow. Amen. Yeah, so I flew to Europe, spent four months without any money in Europe, I was literally preaching for rice. <laughs> wow. I would preach so I could eat. <laughs> wow. So I, I, I spent four months in Europe without spending a single penny in eight countries. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. Oh, wow. God provided yeah. for you yeah. each and every day, huh? Yeah. yeah. If it's God's will, it's God's, it's God's will, it's God's bill, man. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. yes. Oh my yes. goodness. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. so, so that was the start of the ministry, just, just traveling and, and doing that. Okay, so that was the first job that you got when you started your ministry. Then what did you do after that? Yeah, that, that, that was the first job. And then till now, I'm still doing that. But, but now I also have a ministry called Tell Them Creatives in okay. YouTube. Okay. And we, we create YouTube videos of mission stories around the world. Right. So there are mission um, like opportunities. Like, you know, if you watch Hope Channel and 3ABN, you have all these big ministries around and they have really big exposure. People right. give donations and all that kind of stuff. So the whole idea is why not we go to places or ministries where there's no exposure right. and maybe we put that in the internet and maybe people right. could crowdfund it, you know? Right. And so we would go to the leper colony in China. We would go to um, uh, the Myanmar kids that we, we teach music with. So all these stuff down south in the Philippines, uh, ministry to the Muslim rebels, you know, it, it's, it's, so we make videos so, so people in the internet could support them. Right. So that's the whole idea. Right, right, yeah. right. I remember seeing one of them about a school that you were in. Where about yeah. that? Yeah. So that was, that was in Papua, uh, Indonesia, um, one of the most rem remotest places I've ever been. Mm. Um, it, it's crazy because it's in the middle of the jungle. There's no roads in Papua and it's very difficult for teachers to come. And that was one of the struggles there, but, but we decided, you know what, maybe we can help out build schools. And so, mm -hmm. so right. we build like tiny schools there and, 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 and make videos about it. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there's people who've donated, uh, mm -hmm. to the ministry, um, we found races, fundraising, did fundraising in the U S and eventually build more schools and that's the whole idea of the ministry right go to a place spend like two three weeks mm -hmm. in kenya and the Maasai land mm -hmm. in tanzania and all these places mm -hmm. and establish a video and produce it for the internet to see and maybe people could come and crowdfund the, the whole project nice. 
Wow. Beautiful. That's beautiful. beautiful. Wow. So you would consider yourself as a, as a, as a what? What what would you um call yourself? A, a missionary, yeah. evangelist? Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what's um, the name? I would probably call myself a digital missionary. Okay. Because most of my work is in <laughs> in the internet. Uh, maybe a digital nomad. That's just a fancy way to say I'm homeless. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, I live out of a suitcase. You know, I only have maybe five shirts, a few pants. Anything, whatever fits in my bag, that's it. If it doesn't fit, it goes away. So I've been living out of my bag for five years. Wow. wow. So that's 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 the case. Wow. <laughs> but hey, survival. I've realized that you could live very little with very little, that which yes. which is yes. a blessing. Yes. 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 Amazing. Wow. It's amazing. Amazing. So yeah. because your job is traveling all over the place, what happened during COVID? Oh, it's this is this is an an interesting transition, and I think uh, I'm really excited to share this 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 vision because when when COVID came, I can't travel. In fact, 2020, I've only did 10 countries. Mm. Usually, I would average 30 or 40 countries go oh. going per year, mm -hmm. um, going back and forth. And then and then when COVID hits, I only got like 10, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, what do we do? And Damn, I ended wow. up in America for seven months, right. and and we did have. A friend of mine had the, the homeless ministry yeah. and, and usually there's a, actually COVID gave like a big shift in my ministry mm. because as an evangelist, as a preacher, all I did is invite people to church mm. and now I can't invite people to church. Mm. So we decided, you know what, why don't we bring church to the people? Right. Oh. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And so I had this amazing, I, I was having a conversation with one of the preacher and, and one, he, he said that that Jasper salvation is in circles, not in pews. Mm. If you read the Bible, it's always like that. You know, right. it's always like that. You see Jesus eating with people all the time. He mm. ate with people. He's mm. eating with people. He's about to eat with people. Mm. He's always eating with people. Mm -hmm. and, and because of that principle, mm -hmm. and this is a principle that I've learned last year that is, is very relevant. And that is, if you look at Jesus's ministry, the pattern goes like this every time. The pattern is, Communion, then conversion. Right. Communion, then conversion. It's right. always communion before yep. conversion. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And for, for many years of my ministry, it's all about conversion first. Then I'll mm -hmm. commune you with you if you're converted. <laughs> right. right, right, right. So you eat, we will have we'll have dinner after you receive after the you message. Baptize. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But Jesus did not do that. You know, Jesus mm -hmm. ate with sinners. Mm -hmm. You know, he 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 ate with the marginalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And so so I said, man, what how does that look like if the church is closed? And so I brought that in the Philippines and and I've opened my house to the kids around the community. Mm -hmm. We have like like 17, 15 young kids come here every night. Right. And all we did was just eat together. Wow. Eat together. Man. And if they want to attend worship at night, because we do worship at night, then they're welcome. Right. But we're not forcing Bible studies. We're not giving, we're just eating with people. And, and because of the principle for the past, how many months now? I think we have 27 people baptized. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No evangelistic campaign. Wow. No, it's just eating with people. <laughs> wow. And so, that's amazing. So a friend of mine told me that people always stay where they, where they feel seen, mm. heard, loved, and figured in. When they see a safe place to, yeah. to, to that your atmosphere is a safe place to go right. to, mm -hmm. they stay. So regardless of what doctrines you have, regardless of what you believe, if you have a relational atmosphere, yeah. like a safe place where people can build relationships, mm -hmm. people stay. Yeah. Yes. And these are Gen Zs and, and young adults, yeah. you know, and all we did, all we did is just eat with people. And currently I'm also doing a church plant. I'm planning a church where a church that is centered on that, right. you know, a church that is not centered in programs, right. but program instead of, of people serving the programs, the programs are serving the people. people. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so we just trying to redefine church again, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's um that's powerful. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. That's real ministry. That makes sense. Yes, that's real ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 this pandemic exposed how 
our church is not so important in the eyes of our young people. Yeah, what true. the most important part is relationship. Yes. yes. And if we don't go to that route, we will lose a lot of them. Yes. yes. And that really gave me a little understanding, man, I need to redesign my ministry. Mm -hmm. And if, if your ministry does not plunge in and create a genuine relationship to the hearts of the people, mm. then it's not, it's not a church. Right. Right. It's true. So true. So true. So. Yeah. 114 times in the new Testament, the church was mentioned, not even once it referred to the building, not even once mm. referred it's to the program. It's yeah, true. It's very true. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's people. It's so, people. So yeah, that, that, that was one of the best lessons I've learned last year. <laughs> like, what? man, thank you, Jesus. You know, if, if not for the pandemic, I've never learned that lesson. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So I saw that you were part of um, Justin and Caleb's ministry mm -hmm. with the with the docu series that you, mm -hmm. um, he just did. Tell us a little bit about your role in that. And and by mm -hmm. by the way, yeah. by the way, before you go into that, I just want to say that you um you're the third installment. We had Justin on, we had Caleb, Caleb on, on, and now we have oh. Jasper on. So now we're complete. The, 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 the trilogy. The, the trilogy is, is it's it's complete now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so Justin and Caleb did this 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 awesome ministry called Humans of Adventism. I was I was helping out with Caleb, of course, and mm -hmm. um, just just taking pictures at first, you know. Um, both three of us actually started just making videos, you know, for Ben in uh, in in Oregon. It was not really that that major. Um, they called me up and, and, and asked to help out with humans of Adventism. I did some of the shoots for them, not, not all of them, okay. but, but I think it is not for me, it was not mainly because I'm like, like part of the shoots and all that, but because of the learning that I got from these guys. Yeah. I think the principle that I shared to you, the listening, just eating with people, yeah. just, just coming to people without this combative yeah. Seventh-day Adventist manner of like, oh, I know the truth and you don't know. So I had to tell you the truth. Right. So, so I think that's something that has like, that I've learned and, and uh, I don't want to like boost Justin's pride, but I think that that's something that I've right. majorly learned from these guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey man, yeah. you know, we want to listen. You know, and mm. and that is not my strength at all mm, okay. <laughs> in my ministry. My ministry is you listen to me. Mm. I have the truth. <laughs> right. You know, right. And, and and because of that project, because I, I was with them, you know, like like listening, brainstorming with them when it was starting. Mm -hmm. um, I actually uh, helped film the trailer of that, too. So because of that process, I've learned a lot of things. And man, you know, this is what church looks like. Yes. You know, this yep. church is not all about us bringing people to the church. It's all about bringing the church to where people to the, is yeah. at. Oh, right. And the most major thing I've learned is that, you know, we, we, you know, we reach people where they, they are, not where they should be, Right. you know? And, and that's something that has, that I got from that. Not just that, you know, like, yeah, I've enjoyed filming with these guys, but but listening and learning the method, you know, of what Jesus did too, mm -hmm. right, is is really powerful. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Yep. And that's what Jesus did on earth. He was um, Jesus was always mm -hmm. out there doing ministry. He went from mm -hmm. place to place. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus mm -hmm. Jesus did not have a, a church that that people were coming to his church. He was, yeah. his church was on mm -hmm. his you know on his feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Different places. Yeah. Yeah. So, Amen. so, so t tell us a little bit, cause I've seen your photography, man, oh. man, your pictures are awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fine. So thank you. Yeah. Tell mm -hmm. us, tell us a little bit about um, what, what inspires you to shoot and uh, where do you get your inspiration <clears throat> from? Yeah. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, I think when I was starting, I, I never knew what, what I was doing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I never had any mentor. I wish I had a mentor, <laughs> but <laughs> I did not have any. But there's a principle, and, and if, if, if there's young people listening to this, I just want to encourage you guys that, that do not wait for, for, for better gear to start. You know, many of us are always like, oh, I wish I have this kind of camera. I wish I had this kind of tool. Mm -hmm. You know, you just need to start. And that's something that, 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 has, that I've learned, you know, for the past few years, mm -hmm. that 
the Bible says, if you're faithful to that which is least, yes. you'll be faithful to that which is much. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And if you, mm -hmm. if you look at it, this is what actually Jesus is saying. Mm. Faithfulness equals to opportunities. Right. Faithfulness equals to opportunities. Yep. Opportunities only comes when we are faithful to what God has given us now. Yes. And Ellen White confirms this in her writing. She said, light is only increasing when you're faithful to the light that you received in the past. Ah, so so you can only get light, more light, if you're faithful to the light that you're given in the right, past. Right. And so and so the whole idea to this is that if you want to 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 develop your skills, you need to be faithful with what you have. Yes. And so when I was starting, I don't know what to do, but I took that by heart and I said, I have YouTube. I don't have any mentor, but I have YouTube University. Mm -hmm. I could go I could type anything in YouTube and YouTube could teach me. Right. right? Yeah. And so I started every 15 minutes just watching and 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 learning, man. And in a matter of one and a half out uh, one one and a half years, my my pictures were featured in National Geographic. And I never imagined that happened. Wow. Yeah. I I have five or six pictures that was featured by National Ge Geographic in the span of one and a half years of learning photography. Right. And if I could do that, there is no supernatural talent that was given to me. Exactly. What I did was this principle. If you're faithful, God will give you more. Yes. That was the principle. Amen. And so I would travel around and I, if I take time, like, like, okay, I, I want to take pictures of this, of that, and, and pray, of course, like pray every time. And, and man, God blesses, man. Like I, I was able to travel. I, I, I was asked to go to places around the world to take pictures and, you know, hotels where places I can't afford. Mm, hotels will yeah. come and say hey would you come and stay here and you take photos and mm. you know so so if i can do it pe young people could do it too mm. you know amen. amen just need to be faithful with what you have yes exactly. yes exactly. yep start start with the tools that you have i've i've, I've had to learn that you know because um you know sometimes you think oh i want to work on this project i want to work on that project but i don't have the right camera i don't have the right editing yeah. equipment you know, so I'm going to wait until I get the equipment and, mm. you know, and, yeah. uh, and God is telling you, you know what, use what you have and, yeah. and, um, yeah. you use what you have and he opened the doors for the, for the other equipment to come yeah. always. It always, yeah. and, I, I can testify to that. And, and we always have this concept of as long as I have this gear, so we accumulate a lot and, and you, you would understand, you know, as a filmmaker, right. <laughs> we have this, this, this problem called gas. You yes. Know, gear yeah. acquisition syndrome. I know. I <laughs> and, know. and it's all about oh getting gear. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. I'm gonna start using that gas. <laughs> oh, you have gas, brother. <laughs> I know. Have all these gear. Like, man. Oh, <laughs> a new I'm, camera comes out. Oh yeah, here goes gas. I know, I, I know, know right? I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Don't oh. don't. Sometimes you, you look and see. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. You know what? Let me not say anything because I do have gas. They eat your gas. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Eh? It's it's an inherent sin, my man. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Wow. Yeah, and but 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 the point is, you don't go to a chef and say, "Hey, Gordon Ramsay, I like your food. What knives do you use?" Right. You don't do that. You. It's yeah, true. it's not. A, it's not. It's yeah. not the magic hat. It's the magician. Yes. Yeah. So if I could put it that way, so yep. it's all about the skills. Yep. And so when the when when the gears comes and it it's all be smooth, you know, yep. because now you have all the skills and start right. with the skills. Start right. with what you have. Exactly. Yep. Great. Um, great. Great lesson. Great advice. Great, great lesson yeah, for the yeah. for the young people. You Absolutely. know, because um, I mentor a lot of young people, man, and that's a that's a great mm -hmm. lesson for them. So yeah. 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 And man, if I could if I could do it, like a a, a guy from like. But like in, in, in the very rural parts of the Philippines mm -hmm. and, and be featured in National Geographic mm. without much gears, mm. it's possible. I think yeah. that, that young people could do it. You yeah. know, I started with a cell phone. Like yeah. I could send you pictures that I took in my phone because God said, you know what, be faithful. Right. You know, don't wait. Do it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the and the amazing thing with that, um, God is able to use you with the talents that he has given you to touch mm -hmm. lives and yeah. to reach people and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, <clears throat> to your photos and to what you're mm -hmm. doing with ministry and, mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. else. So, um, so, so, so and, and can I, can I mention that, that, um, I'm, I'm not doing photography or video so I can travel. 
Mm, right. You know, so so I could get a hotel. You know, right. I'm not doing that for. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it is because I love serving. Right. And and yep. you know, it's either when I do photography, I sell prints. You know, sell stock footage so I could support more ministries. Right. You know, so it's not because okay, we're building my own kingdom, and I want I want young people to understand that because people come and they said, hey. I want to do what you do. And when they say, I want to do what you do, they refer to traveling. Mm. And right. I just want to make it clear that I'm not here for traveling. I'm, I'm here because of the service and the, 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 the opportunities that God has given. Amen. And so if, if you're here for traveling, and, and in fact, uh, maybe, maybe it's good to insert this lesson. Um, two years ago, I was very depressed, man. I was, uh, I had like intense depression and, and I really thought that traveling would fill me up. Oh, okay. So one time I was, I was in Australia, the sleeping, like preaching after my sermon, I was looking at the ceiling and I felt so empty, man. I, I felt so sad, I was lonely. Right. And, and I was in 25 countries in, in two months. Mm. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> and so. I was in the, in, in the bed and I was just, man, I'm so lonely. I'm doing ministry. Why am I so lonely? Right. And, and at that point, the, the Lord just revealed to me, man, that ministry cannot fill you up. It mm -hmm. cannot fill you up. Your first calling is not service. Your first calling is not mission work. Your mm -hmm. first calling is to have a relationship with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's your number one calling. And my calling was not to travel. It was right. not, my first calling was not, was not to do missionary work. Right. right. And young people, if you're watching this, you will not be, be fulfilled by ministry. It will never fill you up. Right. Mission work will not fill you up. Right. Not until you have your identity in Christ. That, that's where you find your, full, your real fulfillment. Yes. When Paul was knocked out in, in, in his experience, he was blinded. The very first thing that he asked the light was, who are you, Lord? Um, he did not ask, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to right. do? It's His true. question was, who are you? He understood that he never had that relationship with that being. Right. It's like, your first calling is not, where do you want me to go, Lord? That's not your first calling. Your first calling is, who are you, Lord? I want to know you. Right. And when you know Jesus, he will let you know where you want to go. Amen. 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 It's true. It's true. Yep. Nothing can, nothing can fill you about Christ and that relationship, mm -hmm. you know, because um, it, it's always a temporary fill though, because even going back to the gear, right? When, um, that's why we have guests because we buy all this gear and we're just happy with it for what? For the first week? You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, don't don't expose it, man. <laughs> don't don't expose our Listen, sins. man, you don't want to blow it up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know what? Don't ask the next question. I'm gonna put it over to Dawn now. <laughs> That's too much. It's <laughs> too funny. So so tell us, how is your how have you seen the progression of your relationship with God up to this point mm -hmm. in your life? Now I had I had total peace in Jesus, you know, like I think that this year and last year was one of the best times in my religious experience in terms of my own identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. I think that for many years I have put my identity on what I do. And I, I think I'll be super candid in this one. I put my identity on my traveling and my photos and my videos. Then the pandemic came mm -hmm. and I have nothing to, to fuel my identity, <laughs> you know? Wow. Like I no longer have good pictures. I don't longer have a place to put, to show people. Right. And I've, I've, I've realized that because of the pandemic, God showed that, hey man, you know, you have been putting your trust so much in what you can do. Mm. And, and this year has been a year of contemplation for me. And I've realized that my identity is not in what I do. Right. My worth is because of what Jesus has done in the cross. Right. And you can read this in Psalms 3. Psalms 3 is very relevant to me this, this, this past few months because there was an experience of when David, when his kingship was taken away from him by his son Absalom, yeah. there was a threat yeah. against his kingship. Right. Yeah. And, and there was a verse there in Psalms 3 that says, but you are my glory. Mm. You know, and I said, man, why did he say you are my glory? That means his glory was somewhere else before Psalms 3. Right. His glory was is in kingship. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Because people would sing that Saul could kill thousands and David could kill 10,000. Right. And there was a time where people now saying he's a rapist, he has killed Uriah, he is, you know, people have destroyed his, his reputation. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. By now he said, but Lord, you are my glory. My worth is not what I've done. My worth is in you. Yeah. And that's kind of like my experience this this year. And it's like no pandemic. You can't travel. But but now God has given me understanding, man, that that my worth is not fa- found in what I do, but it's in Jesus. Yes. So that's something that I've really cherished personally yeah. uh, this year. And, and yeah, man, it, 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 it's such a peaceful thought knowing that no matter what happens, if I lose my ministry, as long as I have Jesus, I'll be safe. Amen. 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 Yeah, wow. that's very powerful, especially for us men. You know, we um, yeah, we we are identified by who we are. You know, it's who we yeah. are. Like like I'm a filmmaker, so that's who I am. You know, what I'm saying so. I take mm-hmm. pride in that, and sometimes that replaces you know who you are in God's sight. Mm-hmm. You know, because you you're leaning onto your own understanding now. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that you know yeah. it's who I am. So that's yeah. that's very powerful right there. Wow. Yep. And the pandemic exposed the whole thing. <laughs> like yep. now you can't travel. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so what's your latest project that you're working on now? I know you're talking about lineage, but I know they're starting to film everything now. So what is your latest thing now? Um, so, so currently if you can pray for us, we actually are praying that the, the countries will open now. Mm. Um, there is a struggle going to different countries. But but now we want to go to Iraq, Syria, and Iran. Oh wow! Okay. Okay. So so um, I'm, we're praying for that. Hopefully that ha- happens. Mm. Um, and also we're trying to get to Israel again. Um, mm. But now, practically, I'm building a church plant in my my home island. I am not paid by anyone. I just felt like. Um, I can. Uh, I probably will support myself doing. Uh, you know this. So I. I'll have a little not have restrictions, you know, what kind of programs mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so, so that's what I currently do. That's, that's the shift that where I'm, awesome. I'm at. Awesome. All right. All right. Okay. So, that's so fine. when are you, uh, okay. So you, you came to the United States, um, wait, by the way, let's back up a little bit. Where did you meet yeah. Justin? Where did you meet Justin? Justin and Caleb. Yeah. I've only met Justin online. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, I made I made one of my first vlogs of, as you mentioned, the the kids right. walking uh, in the jungles. Yes. And and Justin messaged me. He's like, "Oh, we I love this. You know, can you you know want to link up?" And and I ended up in Portland. I have no place to stay. And so he was like, "Hey, you want to stay in the house?" And I spent like two months there in his house. Oh, nice. oh wow! <laughs> I'm completely strange. Like like I've never met him before. So I was a, like a stranger, but he let me in. And that was the start. Um, every year we have projects together. Amen. So. Amen. Wow. It's amazing. Awesome. How, amazing how God put you guys together, mm-hmm. man. Because you guys. You guys oh, man. Yeah. And like, then, and then, is, and then you, you can't you, tell me these are all accidental. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And uh, we were able to meet you in person because really of that. Came. You know, yeah. you could. Yeah. We invited Justin. And then it, Justin invited Caleb. Caleb. Then all of a sudden we heard there was yeah, a third, third one, one. was Jasper. And, and uh, you guys, you guys were amazing, amazing. when you came amazing. when you came with us. Yeah, I was I was doing a, a little project in Pennsylvania conference, and it's like, wait, Jasper, you're on the East Coast. Why don't you fly down? And I was like, okay, Uh-oh. sure, I fly down. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah. we were great. They you. promised me Cuban food with with <laughs> with um, with Juan. And yes. I was like, yes. okay, I'm flying. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So, That's so true. Yep. Wow. Wonderful, wonderful. Man, Jasper, wow. I don't know. We we can we can talk, talk forever. forever. <laughs> we can talk forever, man. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I know I know it's in the daytime over there for you. Yeah. Um we're we're getting yeah. ready for bed and you're getting ready to go for you to yeah. start your day. Start yeah. Your day. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what's um that's what's amazing about uh, technology, man. This is just amazing. Sometimes, you know, and um, when I see this happening, it just reminds me when God said that the um the gospel would be preached throughout the world, and this is why it's talking yeah. about that mm-hmm. we can um yeah. we can use the tools as as what you said earlier mm-hmm. to do his his work, yep. and uh, we just start mm-hmm. with what we have, you know, mm-hmm. you know, a, a little camera, a little laptop, a little microphone, and that's it. We can talk to talk mm-hmm. to you in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So, which which islands are right. you? Which which island in the Philippines? Which island are you from? 
there's there's an island called um where i'm from it's called negros island okay um it's it negros occidental which is to be specific mm -hmm. okay okay wow, okay wow amazing amazing so before we wrap up tell um Tell where the viewers. Can, where can we link you? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Where can we find your work and find see your, your work, pictures see and, your... and all that stuff? Especially yeah. for the young people. Tell yeah. them where they can find you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we, you can find me on Instagram, uh, PSTR Jasper. That's a code name for Pastor Jasper. <laughs> um, PSTR Jasper. And I have a YouTube channel called Tell Them Creatives. Um, if you also are, if you want, you know, I, I give tips to young people, if they're starting ministries, you can hook me uh, we could hook up on, on Instagram, of course, or, or on Facebook mm -hmm. just type in my name in Facebook. Nice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would love to link up with, with any young people who are starting. Maybe if you, if you want some tips, I can help you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Cause when I was starting a ministry, that's what I did. I was bugging people a lot. <laughs> right. So you give him back. Like, hey, what do you do with this? What do you do with that? You know, right. you know, and and, and uh, I wish there's more willing people to help out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's what it's about. You give yeah. him back. So, back. Yeah. and um, so yeah. I want to encourage young people, man, yeah. link up with just with Jasper, Jasper. link mm -hmm. up with Jasper, man. Mm -hmm. His, his, his work is amazing yeah. and you will learn a lot, man. So, yeah. 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 Thank you so much again yeah, for, for taking you. your time out. And uh, this was amazing. Very, very beautiful to to hear your story mm -hmm. and to and to um you know what? Gotta get you one of these, man. Yeah, so, we have to send it um, to the Please. Door. Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long it's gonna take to get over there, man, but we'll we'll, we'll make the arrangement. Yeah. Hey, I'll be there in April okay. in, in the US. Uh, okay. COVID willing. <laughs> okay. So so hopefully hopefully it's faster. <laughs> Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. All awesome. right. Yeah, definitely. When you when you yeah. come when you come to United States, just let us know yeah, and um yeah. we'll 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 For get sure. to you. All mm. right. So nice. All right. Alrighty. So thank you again. Dawn is gonna pray to um yeah. to close us out. Okay. All right. All right, loving Father, we thank you so much for this testimony. What an amazing journey you've sent Jasper on from the beginning of his life up to yes. this point. And what of an, an inspiration it is that we can do church differently, that we can reach people in a different way, that we can just be relational so that we can show yeah. you to everyone that we meet. Yes. So I ask, Lord, that everything that he has to do, that you continue to bless his ministry, his church plant, everything that he wants to aspire to achieve for you and help him to keep serving you in the way that he is, be with his family, and everyone that he comes in contact with, that he will be able to be a shining light for them and they will be drawn closer to you as a result and we would all be ready to meet you. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. Jasper. Yep. We'll talk soon, man. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. All right. Have a great day, guys.